Hi. Ooh. My eye makeup looks good today. So I recently received a couple messages from you guys thanking me for sharing um, my own experiences with mental health on my platforms. And they really impacted me. It was so nice to read and to realize and remember why I am on social media. Like the whole reason I'm here, the whole reason I've loved this place for so long has been able, has, has been because I'm able to share my own life and have others that can relate or benefit from what I can say um, here. And, you know, it's definitely been harder these days to keep up making videos when I'm feeling so low and like such a lack of confidence and stuff. But messages like that, like it's why I'm sitting here right now making this video because it's important, I do love it. And I also just kind of feel like I'm luckily in a little bit of an upswing with my own mental health right now. So I thought I would take this time to sit down, update you on what I've been doing for like the past six months since I made my first or whatever video about mental health and just, yeah, tell you what's been up. When I made that video six months ago, I was prescribed um, 10, 10 milligrams of the generic of Lexapro, which is acetilopram. I still can't say it. Um, since then, I've been upped to like 15 and then I was up to 20 milligrams. And then they also prescribed me um, gabapentin, 300 milligrams of that three times a day for anxiety. So over the past six months, the meds haven't really been doing the job that they probably should have, should be doing for me. My therapist has said so too, that we're, she's not exactly happy with where I'm at yet. Um, so I am also frustrated because, you know, it's like these meds just feel like they take so long and it just feels like, I don't know, it just, it just kind of sucks. It feels like we are still so behind with innovations within mental health care and the whole like let's just test out a bunch of SSRIs on you until like we figure out which one works or we realize none of them work we can start trying alternative methods it just kind of like sucks and it makes me disappointed within the industry like the mental health care situation so two weeks ago at my psychiatrist's office I did genetic testing to determine which medications for mental health will probably work best for me and which ones probably won't um, so I swabbed my cheeks with like a little swab they sent it away and I will get a report soon about all of that information so that we take out some of the guesswork when it comes to taking medication. Also just kind of like, why didn't we do this in the first place? My insurance covers it fully, whatever. But if you have that option, I would recommend it. I think it could be helpful. So at that point, I'll make a decision on what I want to do if I want to switch off to something else. Um, I've also been kind of doing my own little research into alternatives to this sort of thing to prescription meds. Um, there are a lot of different alternatives out there, but it is kind of still like the wild west of this stuff. What's frustrating is a lot of drugs out there that are considered illegal are potentially helpful for this kind of stuff. Things like psilocybin, which is mushrooms, um, things like LSD, MDMA, all these other things that have had some help or like have been studied a little bit about mental health. Because of how we've classified them in, in the US, we haven't been able to understand fully how those might help people. There are some studies out there that um, have shown how these drugs have helped people. Um, so it's, it's really frustrating. There's also been like a lack of innovation within women's healthcare, which is like, you know, particularly interesting for me because I suffer from PMDD, which I've talked about in the last video, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Um, I think that there has been a lack of innovation there because historically women haven't been viewed as the default patient within medical care. Women haven't been taken as seriously for their pain, especially women of color. There's a lot of research around that. Um, and I just think about where, where we could be with women's health care if women were, were more taken seriously and viewed as people who deserve the best sort of health care possible. That's all just to say that I'm frustrated and well, I guess that's just fine. And I'm gonna work with my doctor to figure out a good solution. Um, but it's just been hard still dealing with anxiety and depression. 
Um, I do feel like I'm on an upswing. I feel like there's certain factors around just like lifestyle that can affect my mood. Like for instance, the weather in Chicago is getting better finally. Like I feel like in Chicago, I've, I'm like, okay, winter's fine. I can deal with winter, you know, December comes and it's like pretty and snowy and whatever. February starts to come and you're like, I am done. I'm going to break as a person if I don't have warmth or any sort of hope, you know, for spring. And then March comes and it's still shitty outside and you're like, I am breaking as a person now. I cannot do this any longer. Please, I need to feel the warmth of the sun on my skin. Please, God, please. And then finally it starts to get a little bit warmer and sunny out and it's just like, oh my God, I feel like then I can like start to flourish as a person again. Um, like I started to see like little buds on trees or little like tulips popping up and it's like, oh my God, yes. And then there's like sun coming down and it's like daylight until like 7 p.m. And it's like, yes. And even just trying to do things like exercise, obviously exercise isn't gonna save your mental health. I hate when people kind of imply that, but I know that it definitely helps. So I try to do that, but it's really hard to do that when you're like depressed and don't want to go outside and like move around. So one other thing too that I can update you on, the last time when I made that video six months ago, I was still employed. I was in a leave of absence from my job. I left my job in early January and I've been freelancing and just kind of floating around since trying to figure out my life. It's actually been really nice being on my own though. Like I have uh, flexibility in my hours that I work. I get to choose what I want to work on like it's definitely not the most stable situation I'd like it to become more stable and I have ideas around that but it has been really nice being on my own um, I think that you know I haven't really talked a lot about why I left my job or you know details around that even just like looking over the past five years there but I don't think that advertising agency culture is the most helpful for folks who have mental health issues just if you work in advertising or if you know that sort of culture it's like long hours like sometimes like seven days a week um overtime always like egos office politics all of that stacked up together can be really a lot for a person's mind and especially somebody who has anxiety and depression. I really did learn a lot though this past, these past five years. I am so thankful for my time there. I can now take what I know from working within that side of things, like working within a team structure, working with clients, knowing how to communicate with clients, knowing how to work with feedback, knowing how to email people, knowing how to deal with contracts. I can take all of that knowledge and apply that to my own personal stuff with like influencer stuff, with YouTube stuff. Um, with consulting. I've been doing some consulting on the side here and I can bring that side to this. So I feel like it really like helps me create my own niche where I know not only know the social media side as an influencer, but I also have this like five years of advertising agency experience under my belt. So that's been great. Um, and if you're interested, I could potentially make a video about my time in advertising and just talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, but for now, I'm just kind of like doing a quick little overview. So let me know if you'd be interested. I've got ideas on building up things like workshops and stuff for the community here in Chicago and potentially online as well around like how to work with brands, how I deal with all that stuff, like all the little nitty gritty details on contracts, emailing, how to get work, all that stuff. I'm thinking about ways to package that up and hopefully offer that soon. I don't know. I'm hopeful, more hopeful than I have been over the past six months. Um, I feel, at least right now, more confident in myself and in what I'm good at. That's been a huge struggle over the past couple of months. I have felt such horrible, like low self-esteem. I have felt horribly like insecure about myself, my body, um, how I talk about things, how I interact with people, how I appear on the internet, all of these things. Um, but I've been doing a lot of work with my therapist around my own values, like laying down the things that I care about in my life and then living in accordance with that. And when I do stuff like that, it feels more like I have a compass. Like I remember the things that I really care about and I don't mind so much then about what people might say about me. 
because if I'm living in accordance with things that I value, then fuck them. So hopefully the more that I can internalize that and put that into practice, the more confident I'll feel to make videos like this and to, to be on social media doing the things that I love instead of kind of hiding away and like self-medicating and coping alone. While I love this place, I am also just, as you probably know if you follow me, just like super critical of these places and it just, I just hate where social media has ended up right now. Um, that's also probably a whole video I can make on just like the state of social media and like how I feel about it. Like TLDR, I think that I don't really feel like at home anywhere on the internet like I used to. Um, there used to be platforms that I feel like I felt really at home at that made sense for me. Um, and I don't really feel like there's anything like that right now. Like there's like little bits of it. Like I think like Reddit has been a really nice space for me to hang out lately. Um, honestly, TikTok has been a really like unique space. Like it reminds me of Vine. I didn't think that musically was gonna be able to pull this off, but they I think have. And it's just been a really different entertaining place to be. Obviously like these platforms, they have issues, you know, like I'm not saying like, go TikTok, woohoo. I'm just saying like out of every horrible platform we have right now, like I guess those two are what's been nice for me. Um, but I have so much criticism and I think I probably should make a video about that stuff. Um, and also talk about where I see hope. I, there's, that's something I always want to do and anything I talk about or do on here is also have, you know, where my hopes are for this kind of stuff. I am cynical, but I've always had optimism with these sort of things. So I do see little glimpses of hope within this social media world. So I wanna talk about those things too. I, I don't know, I hope this was interesting at all to someone. Um, I definitely would like to do more where I just sit down and talk to you guys. Um, and I also just want to do like shit like make do makeup tutorials again. Like I still love makeup. I like Would love to just sit down and do like a get ready with me and just chat so I don't know I just want to like do the things that I love to do and not overthink it anymore You know, I'm most active these days on Instagram stories and Honestly, like I've been updating my Pinterest a lot. So if you're interested in that, that's also something kind of weird out there, but um that's where I'll be, and hopefully I will be on here again, though, soon. We'll see. Okay, bye!